I have drank way too much wine. <laughs> Hello everyone and happy Valentine's Day. Blah. Now I was tempted to do some Valentine's Day crafts or something for this festive occasion, but instead I decided the best thing to do was just to get drunk. I mean taste test some wine. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be taste testing 10 different wines from 10 different price points to see which one's best. And out of those 10 different wines, I have one mystery wine. <laughs> So we'll see how that ranks in this competition. And the whole purpose of this wine tasting video is so for Valentine's Day, if you're having a romantic date or you're sitting alone in a corner in a dark room, you know exactly which wine to drink. Anyway, let's jump straight into the first one and get some wine drunk. So for the first wine, we're gonna be taste testing Labrusco, which is a red wine. And I did wanna have a collection of wines. I didn't wanna just stick to wine. <laughs> wine? <laughs> I'm not drunk yet. And I did want to have a selection of wines, I didn't want to just stick to white, which is my favourite. So I've got red, rosé and white. And this one's a red wine, and I don't like red wine, I have to admit. Apparently this one's made in Italy, and it's 5.5% volume, so it's on the lower side of alcohol for wine. And this was quite a cheap bottle as well, it was £2.75. And usually with wine, it has a type of wine, so a Cabernet or a Merlot. And this one is just sweet and fruity apparently. It's a non-specific red wine, it's sweet and refreshing, and ideal as an aperitif. Aperitif? I don't know what aperitif is. And it's made from the Labrusco grape. Let's crack it up and see what it's like. It smells like red wine. Oh, is this fizzy? Ah, oh, it's a fizzy red wine. I can't stand sparkling wine. Ah, oh, this is gonna be gross. So with this one, it's two of my least favorites. It's red and it's sparkling. So this is gonna go in last place, I can already tell. It's actually, it's not too bad. It doesn't actually taste alcoholic, which is quite dangerous. I'm pleasantly surprised at that. Hmm, where shall I rank this one? I think I'll put Lambrusco in... I'll put it in fifth place. I think it's a good start. It's middle of the way. It's it's not bad, actually. It might move further up. It all depends on what all... <laughs> can't f talk. It all depends on what the... <laughs> oh my god, I'm pissed. It all depends on what the other wines taste like. That's what I was trying to say. Oh my god. Okay, since I've just had a red wine, I thought I'd do another red wine, just so I could compare the both of them. And I only bought two red wines. Hopefully this one isn't sparkling. So this one is 19 Crimes. I think that's the name of the wine. And I bought it just on the bottle alone, because it just looks so cool, doesn't it? It looks kind of vintage, I like it. And this bottle was £7, so more expensive than the last one. Okay, and this is 13.5% volume, so it's kind of average. It's like in the middle for a, a wine based on alcohol content. It's an Australian wine, apparently. It says, a liquid ode, two hour past, 19 Crimes is inspired by those who, beginning in 17. 88 were transported to Australia for a life of hard labor. Many did not survive the journey for the sea beaten people who made it ashore and new world awaited. Oh, a little bit of a depressing story behind it. And again, this isn't a Cabernet or a Merlot or anything, it just says red wine. Right, and this one's a corked one, so you know it's fancy. I'll wait for the sound. Ah. I wanted the pop sound. That was depressing. Anyway, let's give this one a taste. All right, this one's a still wine, which is good. It smells like red wine. Mmm, yeah. Oh, it's very red winey. It's quite tart. It's actually, it's not too bad either. Maybe I do like red wine. It's quite light. It's not heavy. I usually associate red wines with being like a really heavy drink, but this one, it's not, it's not that bad. I don't know whether I could drink a full glass of it. It, it's all right, but yeah, I think I'll put 19 crimes in seventh place again All of these could change later on once I've tasted them all right moving on Okay, so I think I'll do it in groups So I'll taste test the rosé wines next which I've got two of them as well Okay, so next up we've got Jen which is a rosé wine made in France and I bought this purely because of the bottle I absolutely love the bottle on this one and this one was seven pounds fifty and it's a 12% alcohol so again quite in the middle. But yeah, I'm just hoping it's not just style over substance. I hope the wine tastes nice. I need fingernails. It doesn't actually tell me what this wine is, and it doesn't have a backstory or anything, so who knows? Who knows? I don't know whether you can see the top on that. It's not a cork, it's like, it's like a glass stopper. I've never seen anything like it. Right, let's have a taste test. 
It smells like rosé wine. I'm not a huge lover of rosé either, I only like white. It doesn't really taste like anything. It honestly, it has no flavour at all. It just kind of tastes like watered down wine. I'm not happy with that one. I'm very disappointed. You've got a sexy bottle standing on the shelf and then you just disappoint us with your innards. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! No, this one's not good. I'm putting that in ninth place. Very upset about that one. I'm not messing around today. Taking things seriously. This is wine. Right, so time for the next rosé wine. And this one is Botham and Balfour. Push Heath Estate. And it's an English rosé. And this one was more expensive than the last rosé wine. This was £12, so it should be better. It's 11.5% volume, so it's less alcoholic than the last one. It says, Welcome to one of the most exciting collaborations in wine since English wine began. Sir Ian Botham, OBE. I don't know who that is. One of the greatest... Oh... One of the greatest cricketers that England has ever produced has joined together with Richard and Leslie Balfour Lynn, the passionate driving force behind the award-winning Hush Heath estate. With the shared desire to champion English wine around the world, they have produced this incredible rosé from the Garden of England, Kent. It sounds lovely, doesn't it? It's a bit of a strange story though, isn't it? That a cricketer teamed up with these people to make a wine. Maybe this cricketer just really enjoys wine, I don't know. All right, let's open it up, see what it's like. It doesn't smell nice. Okay, it's got a bit more flavour from the last wine. I can't taste any citrus though. It's okay, but again, it tastes like a watered down wine. It doesn't have like a lot of flavour. Maybe that's just to do with rosé. Strangely enough, it's got like an aftertaste of fart. I don't know what it is. It's got like a really, I don't know, like gross aftertaste. No, I don't like it. I feel like someone just farted in my mouth. Um, I don't know where the hell to rank this from. Was it less or more offensive than the last rosé? Even though it's got like a farty flavour to it. I still think it's better than the gem rose one. So I'm going to put it at 8th for now. The, the rosés aren't doing well today. They're not doing well at all. It might change. I don't don't think it will, I think they'll go lower. Okay, now moving on to the white wines, which is my forte. I enjoy white wine, so I'm gonna be very critical. Okay, so we've got another Lambrusco, but this one is the white wine version. We've already tasted the red one. I'm hoping it's not gonna be sparkling. It's 5.5%, so again, very low on the alcoholic scale, and it's sweet and fruity, bursting with citrus flavors. It doesn't tell me what kind of white wine it is, it's just white wine. <laughs> Apparently it goes with fruity desserts. Did that one say they're exactly the same on that bottle? The red one said sweet and fruity, the white one says sweet and fruity, but apparently the red one is bursting with strawberry flavours and the white one is bursting with citrus flavours. I think you're full of shit. But let's give it a go. It's gonna be fizzy isn't it? It's fizzy, damn it. That's actually not bad. I just spat everywhere. <laughs> I'm such a scrub. It's not bad at all. I think with the last one, I, I thought it didn't really taste very alcoholic. Probably because it's on the lower spectrum. But this one doesn't taste very alcoholic either. It almost just tastes like I'm drinking, like, pop or something. I think if you're not a huge alcohol drinker or a huge wine drinker, I think this one would be a good, like, starter wine. It's very fresh. It is sparkling, but it's not overly sparkling. You know when you get a sparkling wine and it's just, it's too much? It's not that. And it's cheap as well. It's only 2 75 I could happily drink that bottle. I'm gonna put it in third place for now. It might change. It's not gonna get you hammered or anything though. You'd have to drink like three bottles or something. Maybe even four. Okay, moving on to another white wine and my judgment might be a little bit impaired for the rest of the wines because I'm starting to feel it a little bit. But we're moving on to my all time favorite wine and that's Black Tower. Call me cheap, call me whatever you want. Call me unsophisticated, I don't care. I love Black Tower. And this one is just called Fruity White. And funny story with this wine. When I moved to Leicester for university in my first year, I was really nervous about meeting other people and socialising because I'm very socially awkward. So I decided to drink a bottle of wine while I was getting ready to go out and meet all these people. And then I had a second bottle in the fridge and I was like, I'll just have one more glass. And that one more glass ended up being another entire bottle. And it's safe to say I made an ass out of myself. I didn't make a good impression. I made some friends though. <laughs> They thought I was very outgoing. Okay, and this one's 9.5%. So it's, it's, it's okay. It'll get you drunk. <laughs> I know it'll get you drunk. And it's made in Germany, apparently. I've never been to Germany. I would like to go. I can speak a little bit of German, actually. Not a lot. A little bit. I can count to 100 in German. Anyway, this deliciously smooth and fruity white wine is full of fresh pineapple and lime fruit flavors. Wonderfully easy to drink. It's very easy to drink. I know from experience. It is equally enjoyable. Served chilled on its own or with a variety of dishes. I like it on its own. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Ah. 
Oh, you're so good. You are just so good. The thing is with this wine, it's not overly alcoholic. Well, it is, but you can kind of drink a whole bottle and you don't feel like you've drunk a bottle of wine until later on. This is taking the top spot. It'll be very difficult to remove this from number one. So these, the rest of these white wines have to be good. And that costs five pound, by the way, I forgot to mention. So if you're on a budget and you wanna get a bit squiffy, drink Black Tower, not sponsored. And bringing the video back to Valentine's Day, What's everyone's plans for Valentine's Day? I don't have any. I personally find Valentine's Day a complete waste of time. Right, so the next wine we're tasting is Chablis. And this bottle was £12. So a little bit pricier than I would normally spend. And this is a 12.5%. So again, kind of middle of the range. And it was made in France. And France are good for wine, aren't they? So it should be nice. Oh, it's a, it's a Chardonnay. Oh, I don't like Chardonnay. It's dry. I'm not a huge fan of dry white wine. So I don't know whether this will be very nice, but we'll see. This is a fresh, delicate, unorked wine with apple and citrus flavours and a long, classical, mineral finish. And it's lovely to be accompanied with grilled chicken or fish cakes. It's just so specific. Grilled chicken or fish cakes, nothing else. Just them two. Okay, let's have a go. Gotta stir the wine. That's what I've seen people do. Okay. It's not that dry for a Chardonnay, actually. It's a little bit dry. It's like sucking all the moisture out my mouth, but it's not too bad. It doesn't have much flavor. It feels, it almost again tastes kind of watered down. It doesn't have the depth to it that Black Tower does. It's okay. It's kind of average. It's an average wine, I would say. So for that reason, I'm going to put it at fourth place. It might change. You never know. It might change. Who knows? I don't know. I might have to retitle this video to just like get drunk with me. I've just realized I've only got three places left. Second, sixth, and tenth. So apparently I'm going to get a really good wine, a middle of the road wine, and a really shit wine. So I wonder what you're going to be like. So next up we have Fruit Twist by, I think it's just by Tesco, and it's peach and pineapple and this bottle was two pounds and 75 pence so quite cheap it's 5.5 percent so again it's another one of the lower alcoholic wines so it should taste like pop it's a mixed alcoholic beverage with natural flavors are you wine it's packed with fruity flavors this is the perfect summer party drink try mixing with a dash of orange juice and top up with soda water for a longer cocktail uh no i'll have it neat thank you very much and it goes with tex-mex or spicy dishes i think it was made in ireland and i didn't know ireland made wine. Well, we'll soon find out what it tastes like. I think this one will be quite refreshing and quite just like easy to drink. Oh, oh my god. You are delicious. You can smell the peach. It's very fruity. This has got alcohol in. It doesn't taste like it's got alcohol in. Come through Tesco. Come through Ireland. It's very summery. It's very just light. It's very refreshing. It doesn't taste alcoholic at all. Oh, really good. How have I never found you before? Throwing a spanner in the works. I really like that one. It's not very alcoholic, but it tastes really nice. And how much was it? It was 2 75 That's so cheap. I'm going to have to put you in second place. I do like that one. I, I think, again, it's another, like, beginner wine. If you're not a huge wine drinker, you would just, you'd just gobble this up. You really would. I'm going to gobble this up later. Okay, moving on to my last wine before the mystery wine. And this is Brancot Estate Living Land Series. And it's a Sauvignon Blanc. I think this is the first first wine that's actually got a proper name, apart from the Chardonnay. All the others were just called like wine. And I do love a Sauvignon Blanc. I also like a Chenin Blanc as well. It's quite nice. This one was only 350 so it's quite a cheap wine. It's organic and vegan as well, so any vegans out there, you can drink this. Where are you made? It's 12.5% and it's made in New Zealand. I've always wanted to go to New Zealand as well, but I've never been. It's full of vibrant tropical aromas. This Sauvignon Blanc is bursting with white nectarine, grapefruit, and fennel flavors. Live and Land series wines celebrate our efforts to protect the natural environment and gives our wines their special character from replanting native vegetation to revitalizing wetlands and returning indigenous bird species to Marlborough. Oh, okay, so I'm drinking wine and saving the environment. So that's just like a plus plus. It smells nice, it smells fruity. Has it got grapefruit in? It tastes like grapefruit. It's grapefruit, yeah, I'm getting grapefruit. Usually I find with wines, when they say that they've got like citrus or grapefruit or lemons and stuff, you don't really taste it, but you can really taste the grapefruit in here. I'm not a huge fan of grapefruit, but if you like grapefruit, you'll like this wine. It's not bad at all. I don't mind it. I've only got 6th and 10th place, so I think I'm going to have to put you in 6th for now, but you might move up. You might. Okay, and it's time for the last wine, and it's the wild card. And 
the time you've all been waiting for, I think. Hopefully. It's Iceberg, and it's actually an alcoholic-free white wine. Now, I've never had alcohol-free wine, but I've had alternatives to alcoholic wine, which is just juice. So this will be a new experience for us, and it's a Sauvignon Blanc, apparently. So this one was £3.50. I think it's hard to read the receipt. It wasn't to begin with, but it is now. So yeah, so it's got no alcohol in. It's supporting the designated driver. They've spelt driver as in dry and then the. Yeah, I see what you did there. It's good. Our winemakers have created this fresh aromatic Sauvignon Blanc just for you. Thank you. It has classic gooseberry and tropical fruit flavors and has had the alcohol carefully removed, making it perfect for you to enjoy at any time. Enjoy chilled. Our Sauvignon Blanc is perfect on its own or with chicken and seafood dishes. And this one's made in Germany again. I like how they pair wines with very specific foods. So we've got seafood and chicken, which seems to be the main thing. It's not like, this wine would be perfect with a pie, you know? It's fish and chicken. Oh, I don't know about this. Kind of tastes like medicine. I can tell it's not alcoholic. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. It's just got like a medicinal flavor to it. You know what, I'm gonna put it in 10th place. I don't think it's gonna stay in 10th place because I think if you don't drink alcohol, you might like it. It doesn't taste like fire or anything like that, so it definitely has to be above the fart wine. Right, so I'm just gonna go into deliberation with myself and figure out where these wines should actually rank. And by the way, this is probably not a particularly good wine ranking, or like an official wine ranking or anything like that, because I'm a bit pissed. Okay, I've done some deliberation and I went back and tasted some of the wines because it was a, it was a tough, it was a tough one, it was a tough call. Okay, in 10th place is the Botham Rose. Yeah, <laughs> I'll start that again. In 10th place is the Botham, Botham Rosé because it tasted like fart. It was horrible. I don't know, I'm sorry if that's your favorite wine, but you're clearly into fart. In 9th place, I'm still keeping the Gem Rosé. It was all style, no substance. In 8th place, I'm putting the non-alcoholic wine, the Iceberg. Number seven is still the 19 Primes. Number six is the Brancot Estate. And the only reason that I'm putting that in sixth place is because I'm not a huge fan of grapefruit. Number five was the Chablis. In fourth place, I've got the Lambrusco White, which has moved down one. In third place, we've got the Lambrusco Red, because again, it's cheap. I don't particularly like red wine, and it kind of converted me to red wine. In second place, it's the Fruit Twist White Wine. It was almost a tie, but the reason the Black Tower won first place, it just goes down so easy. So does the Fruit Twist, and it tastes nice, but it just tastes like you're drinking pop. Okay, so that does it for my Valentine's Day wine tasting video. But hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And let me know if you disagree with my rankings on these wines. And I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day, whatever you are doing. But anyway, I'm going to go and have some lunch and hopefully sober up a little bit before I edit this video. I'll see you next week for a brand new video. Bye!